I must have photographed it a thousand times. This poem in marble has never ceased to amaze me. I sometimes wonder what the Taj Mahal represents to people like Agra's Jatav community. The hated task of curing hides and making leather products was assigned to them. They were untouchables, consigned to ghettos on the outskirts of the city. It would have been little consolation for them to know that the army of the Mughal Empire marched in Jatav manufactured finery, harnesses, saddles and footwear. The ramp that carried marble to the top of the Taj Mahal began from here. The manure of draught animals moving up the ramp collected in this place, hence the name Gobar Choki, or if you prefer, Manure Square. Gobar Choki was and continues to be home to Agra's Jatavs. With the decline of the Mughal Empire, Every home in Goberjoki became a little factory, making shoes for mass consumption. The scale of business was small, and all members of the family were usually involved. One such family was that of Devki Nandan Son. As a little boy, he worked in this hut, assisting his father in the manufacture of shoes. Devki Nandan had a high degree of political awareness and a sense of self-worth. He took to heart the teachings of Dr. Ambedkar, the architect of India's constitution and a champion of her poor and oppressed. Every evening, Devki Nandan would carry shoes to Hing Ki Mandi, the wholesale shoe market in downtown Agra. Walking through the by-lanes of Goberchauki, he would often wonder if the Jatavs would ever have the social mobility to become entrepreneurs instead of being artisans. Why were they completely dependent on the wholesalers of Hinki Mandi? The baskets are still coming to Hinki Mandi, but three decades ago, Devki Nandan had identified the problem. The real deficiency was in design. Devki Nandan persuaded his father to put him through a shoe design and leather technology course at the central training facility in Agra. Once he graduated, there was no stopping Devki Nandan. His shoe designs, bold, flamboyant and colorful, quickly set him apart from the competition. As the business grew, Devki Nandan built a magnificent new home with the same care that he lavishes on his shoes. Every day, Devki Nandan Son returns to Goberchoki where he calls on his parents. Somewhere deep within him, there still remains a trace of the little boy who trudged through the streets with a basket of shoes on his head. It also gives him the chance to visit his ancestral home, a part of his past that he cherishes, even reveres. It's a daily reminder of how far he has traveled these past 20 years. His factory is one of Agra's largest, and his shoes sell under some of the world's best-known brand names, like Bally's and Florsheim. Better than I discovered that Soane's was by no means an isolated success story. A combination of traditional craftsmanship and entrepreneurship has propelled several others in the Jatav community to the very forefront of India's leather trade.
Devki Nandan Son is about my age. Both of us are children of independent India. What separates us, however, is far greater than what is common to us. I, a child of privilege, allow myself to become easily disillusioned and cynical. He, by comparison, has shrugged off the humiliations heaped upon him by history. I occupy myself trying to grasp and define a dream. He busies himself in translating his dreams into reality. <laughs> 